Okay, so I just wanted to do this real quick to show you guys something. Now you see how he's all scrunched up, and uh, I mentioned on the post that I said that I was going to keep an eye on him. This is actually what they do. He's not dying. He's actually preparing to shed his last skin. Um, one thing I want to mention, if you are a gardener, which I think some of the people in the group are, if you ever see these guys on like tomato plants, uh, tomatoes, cherry trees, uh, wild apple trees, elm, I can't think of what else they eat. Uh, don't kill them. A lot of people do, but the thing is, they their moths are pollinators. Uh, they are the larva of a hawk moth, or sphinx moth, as it's otherwise known. Otherwise known. <clears throat> uh, this particular one, the white line sphinx, it uh, it's moth is actually called the hummingbird moth because uh, the way it flies and hovers at flowers, and a lot of people mistake them for hummingbirds. Um, you know, uh, the moth will actually probably be a good three inches long. So, I mean, these things are huge, but they are awesome to see. And, I mean, you know, once they stop feeding, and honestly, if you collect them off your plants and just put them in, you know, okay, look at this, I've just got it in a little tiny bucket. You just put them in a bucket with some dirt, and, uh, you know, once they fall off the well, no, you know, keep feeding them like leaves, and then once they stop feeding, just put them some potting soil in there. Maybe about six inches, sometimes they'll dig, some won't, and they will be very content with that. And, uh, it takes about two weeks, and then they will hatch into the moth. Some people like to put them in a cooler place, especially at the end of the year like this one, so that they don't hatch out of their, uh, range that they can you know pretty much do what they're meant to do and that's to breed so uh you know a lot of people will put them in cooler storage so that they will overwinter and uh you know so i'm gonna see what my nephew decides he wants to do because honestly he's the only reason i'm keeping this guy to raise into a moth if he wants to be patient and wait then that's what we'll do but uh, I'm expecting this guy to split down near the top of his head here really soon. He's hardly moving. And like I said, you see where he's scrunched up. That's pretty much the exact size of the pupa. So what's going on is the pupa is forming underneath of the skin. And he, you know, he's barely moving. Because, you know, they're not very mobile like, you know, when they're just about to have that happen. So if you do keep these, uh, keep in mind, even if they do start looking like, you know, maybe they're dying, they're not. That's just what happens right before they shed to the pupil stage. Okay, well, I know a lot of this is just rambling on and just randomness, but, um, my thoughts are, you know, if you, if you do gardening and you see these guys, they're not, I mean, granted, in some places they're considered a huge pest. You give them some leaf clippings inside of a bucket and they will do just fine. And you will have moths that will happily pollinate your next season's crops and flowers and other stuff. So yeah, random thoughts, but you know, it, it is something that a lot of people don't really realize before killing them. The moths are very, very awesome to see. And, uh, you know... If you feed these guys just some leaves, they won't give you no trouble. Alright, thanks.